You're listening to NIL Now, a podcast dedicated to the name, image, and likeness of today's college and high school athletes. So we're going to explore the crazy and wildly interesting world of name, image, and likeness. NIL Now, covering the latest sports business headlines and keeping you informed on the nation's top performers. This is NIL Now, where the stars of tomorrow are getting noticed today. It's the Wild Wild West, but we're wrangling it in. Presented by Headline Studio. And read it. Here are your hosts, Lauren Sisler and Kevin Jones. What is going on, my friends? Welcome back to another episode of NIL Now, a production of Headline Studio and Reddit. We're out wherever you listen to your podcast, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a beat. Later on, we're going to have our old buddy, king of the NIL, Raekwon Smith, on the show. Super excited for that conversation as that man continues to thrive in the NIL space. Excited to catch up with him and get some more insights. But in the meantime, it's time to talk to KJ. NIL headlines. First off, off the top, what you make of the NFL draft this year, Kevin? Obviously, it's it's a little different. um, And I think a lot of that obviously could point to the NIL and transfer portal space, which we'll dive into with our top headline. But just overall, what do you think of the NFL draft, especially Thursday night, you know, that first round? The NFL draft is always a surprise. So... I think it fell into that category to see just guys go to, you know, certain teams and, you know, there's always a team that steps up and jumps in and get, grabs somebody that you're not necessarily like, oh, wow, I didn't see that coming. So I think the first round always has those elements of of surprise. So and for me, it's always like a bittersweet moment because I'm, you know, was I was drafted in the first round and I kind of sat and waited for, you know, for me myself to be picked. So I was a 30th pick in the first round. And got to see other guys go before me that I'm like, man, like, why didn't I? Why wasn't I that, that guy at that at that pick? So to see to see other guys go through that, like the quarterback from uh, Kentucky. Yeah, Will Levis. Yeah, well, it was it was, uh, you know, it's a bittersweet thing. Like I can watch it as a fan, but then I watch it from experience, too. And it's always like a heart wrenching, like, oh, like I, all my hopes and dreams are dependent on this. And now this draft day. So it's a lot of nerves that goes on. You got your families there trying to, you know, support you, trying to keep you calm. You know, I see it from a lot of different perspectives. But overall, again, the, the draft is a is a bit of a surprise, but also very entertaining. Where did you do draft day at? I wound up doing draft day in Philadelphia. You know, I'm from Chester, Pennsylvania, but I did it in the city of Philadelphia at a restaurant called Chickie and Pete's. And they were somebody oh, who, okay. who kind of, you know, supported me throughout my high school career and... Um, I just wanted to do, I did it with friends and family members and, you know, it was, it was a good time. We had fans there, like Eagles fans and stuff like that. Cause they were rooting for me to go to Philly, but yeah, it was a fun, it was a fun experience. So we, it, we rented out the whole place and they gave us a private room and we sat there, you know, through the first round waiting to see what would happen. So it was a lot of moves that wound up happening and eventually I got picked and it was pandemonium. Boom, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Round one, bring it down. I love it. Yes, well, you know sir. what? I think that's the one thing you said. Uh, it, 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 I think Will Levis ended up being the perfect example of that where, you know, a guy you expected to go in the first round, he is actually in the room. I mean, he is waiting, 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 waiting. And it's just that anticipation. And so I can only imagine the nerves, the anxiousness, the excitement, and then maybe that bit of relief when your name is called, especially when you do have all those people surrounding you and your support system and everyone that is... Uh, you know, been there from, from day one. And so uh, it is, it is bittersweet and it's always exciting to see guys go, but it also definitely pains my heart when you see guys like Will Levis, who I think is such a great guy, um, have to go through that. So, you know, but it all works out like it's supposed to look at Jalen Hurts. My man just signed that huge contract. Like he had to sit and ride the bench behind Tua at Alabama and, you know, go through a lot of that same, just, you know, uh, confidence bust and, you know, all the things that come along with that. But with that being said, it's interesting. So the Athletic put out this article and really kind of took a deep dive into NIL and Transfer Portal and how that affected this year's quarterback draft class. And so it was 14 quarterbacks that ended up being taken last week, which includes 11 that were taken within the first 150 picks. I guess really the value of the quarterback position has only gone up, but this article talks about the depth of this year's class and wasn't what it necessarily seems on paper on the outside. And so the article highlights those 11 draft-eligible quarterbacks, all of whom were given draft grades from the Athletic, that decided 
to forgo the NFL draft and return to their schools or transfer. And some of the names on the list I think that were interesting um, include Oregon's Bo Nix, LSU's Jake Daniels, and then you've got Sam Hartman, who was obviously at Wake Forest and uh, transferred over to Notre Dame, to name a few. And so when you look at this graphic that was posted by them, just all the names that ended up sticking around or transferring due to, you know, obviously NIL with the transfer portal. As as a as a as a NFL guy yourself, and someone that made that transition and did the deals and went through all those processes, it, it's crazy to me when you see the amount of guys that you would have immediately thought, "Yep, that guy's going." Yep, that guy's going. And now you're sitting here looking at these the, this talent pool that said, "Nah, I'm going to stick around because my chances of making potentially more money and obviously garner more uh, reputation or more recognition." have only gone up since the NIL got here, you know, in recent years. So, yeah, I mean, one thing we got to, we got to realize and everyone else has to realize that NIL is a new factor in all of the decision-making with everything that happens with college football, whether it's the ACC or the SEC or any other conference, they're thinking about NIL, whether it's a head, head coach, you know, talking to recruits, it's in the top three things that they mentioned. Whether it's a recruit coming out of high school, they're thinking about it. You know, like it's in their top three decisions. Whether it's somebody in the portal, they're thinking about it as well. With all that being said, it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect every decision-making process that anyone has moving throughout this space. For one, is money and compensation. For two, it might be something that you consider for staying in school or consider leaving school. So it's, and, and then it's different in between sports. So as we talked before about women's college basketball versus going to the WNBA, you got to consider, well, can I, you know, earn more? It's not make more, it's earn more because they're, they're performing for this, right? They're performing for these, this compensation. Can I earn more money staying in college than I would going, going pro? So it's definitely going to affect every part of the landscape. So for me, it's not a surprise hearing hearing um, these statistics. So I think that everybody else just needs to get on board and think like, yo, NIL is here. It ain't going nowhere until someone comes up with some law that regulates or changes it. I think NIL is here to stay. I think that it helps our student athletes. It gives them opportunities that they wouldn't have. And the people who are wanting to support these athletes are being able to do that now. So it's definitely changing the landscape. But I think for the better. I do want to mention um, another cool story. So LSU linebacker Harold Perkins signed a a deal with the John Deere dealership. Uh, He's a linebacker, a freshman All-American honors last season, signed the deal with Sunshine Quality Solutions, a John Deere dealership in Louisiana, to launch the best player in the field campaign. Perkins, who played high school football in Texas, moved from New Orleans to Houston after Hurricane Katrina. And he was rated the number eight overall prospect in the 20, uh, 24-7 sports composite rankings in 2022. He had seven and a half sacks with three forced fumbles last season at LSU. So I think the cool part about this is not only is he getting to learn about John Deere equipment, uh, but getting to learn more about the agriculture and how important it is to the state of Louisiana. Um, so yeah, just kind of a fun, cool side story uh, about another partnership that you know, is, is garnering some attention. First of all, John Deere is a household name, whether you live in the North, the South, Southeast, wherever, just throughout our country. It's one of those brands that everybody knows about and he understands what it's about. So kind of coupling that, and then you talk about agriculture, you talk about a hurricane that has maybe, you know, destroyed a certain area, and now you have to move across country or not even across country, but just to go to a different place because you're your backyard has been, you know, tore up. I think that this is the deal that makes sense. Just think about it from an agriculture standpoint, but then also thinking about John Deere is one of those things that's in that space. So for them to kind of do a deal together, for most people, it probably feels like, wait, wow, this person's going to deal with John Deere. He's not even, you know, because people think country, like people think country and digging up dirt and stuff like that. But if you think about it in the total picture, to me, it all makes sense. Yeah, and I love I love that whole best player in the field uh, idea. I think exactly. that's a good way exactly. to to kind of pose it. And you know, he's got a great backstory and and just being uprooted in the way that he was, and 
you know, if you're going to have to be uprooted from your home, going to play football in Texas is not a bad place to land, but that comes with a lot of emotional uh, insecurities and things that uh, can certainly um, derail anybody's career. And so kudos to him for for having the success. We need to sign him at Triumph and then the the, the uh, podcast is called Uprooted. Uprooted? I, just did that. <laughs> I got it from you. I got it from you. But no, uh, and then it's sponsored by John Deere. This is what I'm saying. These are the type of these are the type of deals that can make and breaks. You know, not I want to say make and break someone's career, but it exposes them to pro- probably him to a new situation in a new industry. So I think that you know, hopefully, someone's on his team is getting him to really be involved with John Deere, and it's not just a, a cash thing. It should be some learning or education piece to it. Hey, you're welcome on the podcast name. I seem to be doing a good job with uh, some of your triumph athlete oh you, thank you you're very nice much. With it. you don't even know you, you're good you got you'd be saying all types of stuff and i just write it down sometimes i tell you sometimes i don't <laughs> you don't get a mailbox check if we if we do what is it called uprooted uprooted there you go yes i love it i, I get some royalties okay. from that let's go nil now with lauren sisler and kevin jones if you want to learn more about name image and likeness you need to go to the source the nil now podcast from headline studio and reddit highlights the The biggest biggest storylines nil is not a cherry on top it needs to be a part of these young men and women's future to you know further their careers you should be able to leave college with something subscribe to nil now on apple spotify google or wherever you listen to podcasts All right, now we welcome in a guest from one of our first shows back in November. And y'all, I'm so excited about this because we've talked about him so, so much on the show because, oh, by the way, he's the king of NIL. Raekwon Smith has done some great things in the NIL space and certainly brought a lot of people along with him. He just finished up classes last week at Norfolk State. He's now a grad transfer, running back, looking for a new school with two more seasons of eligibility. Raekwon, what is up, my friend? Who is going on? Thanks for having me. It is so great to talk to you, to see your smiling face again. And as I mentioned, so many people have talked about you, seen what you've done, followed along. I know that we've had some other uh, folks on the show and, and people that have talked about your success and and have learned so many great things from you. And so it, it's just been fun kind of seeing your journey. And, and, and it's crazy because things really haven't stopped for you as you've been living up to your name. In late March, you signed an NIL deal with Hardee's. In April, you had posted some content promoting the company. And then, of course, you've just stayed busy uh, with all the things that are happening. And we just appreciate you coming back on the show. And uh, I guess just first and foremost, you know, being a grad transfer, what went into your decision to change schools after graduating from Norfolk State? Well, I've been at uh, Virginia my whole life for 21 years. And, you know, it's, I think it's time for me to find a different area, a different state, just to go around, be around different people, different uh places. You know, I've been in Virginia my whole life. So I just want to go around and just explore different options and opportunities somewhere else. With where we're at right now, because we've kind of watched you just keep climbing the charts uh, with with uh, your deals and everything you've been doing. How many deals are you actually up to right now? I'm at 84, 83. So, wow. yeah, that's the number. So 83 deals. And what's so crazy to me is when you look at the, you know, kind of the charts, because obviously we've been tracking this and, you know, the NIL valuations and seeing where everybody's at. You're at the top of the list, but like you're way at the top of the list because you are far beyond where even a lot of the other athletes are at this point by miles, really, when we when we talk about it. So at 83 deals, just take me through sort of how your portfolio has changed over the course uh, of the last year. Uh, the way my portfolio has changed is it's not the like, the same. When I first started, you know, I've been going for like getting deals, the product, money, and everything. But like, I really translated it over to like just helping other athletes get into where I am now. As far as getting deals, like I don't really look at it towards getting deals anymore. If it happens, it happens. But I'm looking for it's more of the consulting side. I like to go around helping other athletes to uh, learn from me and how I got to where I am now. So that's what I'm really doing most of the time. So. I know I'm trying to go around like different schools, high school, colleges, or just speaking at panels or conferences, just talking about my experience, my story, and the way I got to where I am now. I love that. And I guess, what are some words of advice that you'd like to share? You know, if there's, because obviously you have this opportunity to go talk to different student athletes, kind of, as I said, you've been a, you've been a tremendous asset to this space as someone that has brought people along with you. It's not all about just me. I'm going to go get these NIL deals. 
but you've helped so many people along the way and taught them so many things. What are a few things that people could learn from you, uh, other student athletes and, and people really in the space and whole, in general uh, through this process? The biggest thing is don't be worrying about what people say when you post certain things. You know, a lot of people are going to say certain things when you post on social media. Why do you keep posting this? Why do you keep posting that and all this? But like, you know, you know, at the end of the day that you're doing it for a business, you're doing it for a reason. And, you know, don't worry what other people say. And they're just focus on what you're trying to do and, and achieve in this lifetime goal. Um, the next important thing is really is um, don't worry about letting your Instagram flood up or your timeline get flooded up. A lot of pictures or videos. You know, when I first started, they had like, I probably had like 70 photos on my page. Now I got like probably like 230. You know, I don't delete nothing. I keep airing on it because you never know. Like somebody could scroll all the way down to see when I first started to now. Like it's a big difference than now. So, you know, the most thing is being consistent and just being yourself. That's awesome. And, you know, I guess as we're starting to, to to look at your next chapter, what that looks like, how will NIL play into your decisions as you're, you know, what are what are some key things that you're looking at, including NIL, to, to decide where your next landing spot is? It goes 50-50. I don't, I don't really play as a part as, like, my next success because when I, wherever I go, NIL going to be next to me regardless because I am, like, what people say the – the face of it. So like, you know, I just try to, you know, wherever I go is wherever I go. Uh, I'm going to do what I got to do to help wherever school I go to next, put that school on the map, put them kids on the map, do what they got to do to get them deals and everything, help that school out to get where they need to be at to be successful. And it just sounds like you've obviously grown um, so much in this space and learned so many wonderful things. You know, as you, as you kind of continue on this journey, how has your NIL pitch to companies changed? You know, I'd be interested in knowing if things have changed or, or what are a few things that have evolved that you've maybe changed your approach in being able to land these certain deals, or are you kind of sticking with what you've done all along? Uh, the pitch changed a little bit. Um, I got more leverage, more portfolio, more, more valuable of a name. So, you know, the way it goes now than it was back then, it's a little different. You know, I'm not going to settle for something that I know that I'm more valuable than. So for a pitch, you know, I got a different uh, pitch way down. I got a business proposal. Uh, I go and have like a, it's like it got everything on there from my first deal. It got my social media links, some pictures, shows you all my engagement rates and everything. Then it shows on what I could do for the company, what I bring to the table. Then it shows other slides where I partner with different other people to show you what I could do for that company. And I just send it out to uh, different business companies and everything, email or DM. You know, actually, they email so I can send it to them so they can go over and see if they want the interested in uh, working with me and everything. But most part, I let my agent do that because that's what his job. So, you know, I stay out of it now because I'm really trying to focus on what I'm trying to focus on, get to the next level. You know, next level is NFL. So, you know, it's going to come and go. So I'm letting uh, my agent focus on most of that. That's awesome. You know, you definitely have to still prioritize things, especially because, oh, by the way, you're a student. You have to do well in school you know, got to make the grades, but I think you're, you're learning so many tangible things that I think are going to really carry you obviously to the next level and whatever that looks like, whatever that process looks like, I feel like you can learn a lot. And I would say, as you are looking to go to the next level, and I realize that you, you, you still have some steps to make in between, but how do you think this NIL space has helped someone like yourself as an athlete that wants to go to the pro level? There's got to be some tangible things that you've learned in the process that help you become a businessman. Because we all know when you go to the next level, it is part of a business. The most important thing that really I think is gonna help me when it's time is the marketing side. I know how to market myself really good. So, you know, when it's time, then it's time to go to the next level. Like I know how to put myself out there and get out there to show my case of anything I do. So like I'm just good at marketing. So I think I'm gonna be good at that. I think I'm going to grad school for marketing to get more advanced information on it. So when it's time, I'll be ahead of the game. I think that's awesome because that marketing piece is so huge, especially now. And I think that the realization is your marketing doesn't stop. It's 24 hours a day, your social media, your digital footprint, everything you're doing is you. And, and you know, just even talking to other, um, you know, up and coming athletes in high school, recognizing that, you know, they're now putting out these uh, these accounts, these social platforms that are just dedicated to their sport, their athleticism. But we're also finding that, you know, not only are they being followed by schools and, represent, you know, representatives of schools, even their personal accounts are. And so it's so important to keep all that stuff, that synergy going, 
and obviously promoting yourself in such a positive way. And I think that's, um, speaks volumes to what you've done and you've created a lot of success for yourself. And I think a lot of people are going to continue to follow what you're doing because they're seeing how well you're doing it. And I think that's awesome. And that's going to, it's going to pay dividends when you get to that next level. So I got to ask you, what do you make of all that? When you see yourself at the top of that Forbes list, I mean, what's going through your mind? Like literally Forbes, that's the one place people go when we talk about, you know, obviously, uh, you know, money and business and marketing and all those different things. You're literally at the top of it. You are like the number one, the OG. I know you're the king of NIL, but I'm going to start calling you the OG of NIL too. Uh, what goes in my mind is like, you know, I'm not surprised because I already t- I told myself when I was younger where I was going to be. If I just do, I need to do it for, my, for myself in the position I need to be in. I'll show my parents and my friends and everything. Nobody's surprised because everybody knows that I w- what I was capable of doing once I really put my mind to it. I don't think none of this stuff would be hitting me for real. Like, it's happy because, like, I know what I can do because I know what I put my time in and all my success into. So I'm happy, but, you know, job not done. Job is not done, right? All right. So the job's not done. Last question for you. What else are you hoping to accomplish in the NIL space? Is there one or two things or just something you can pinpoint that you'd say, this is my goal. This is what I hope to accomplish next. My goal is anytime somebody brings an NIL or name image likeness, I need to be the first person they talk about. That's good. Hey, mic drop moment. What's up? I love it. Raekwon, you are awesome. Doing such great things. Always enjoy talking to you. Love following your success. Love following everything you're doing. And um, definitely anxious to see when you start going around and speaking and doing some of those things, please let us know because we'd love to help you kind of promote your, you know, just, uh, you know, your platform and getting other student athletes and people involved because I think people like you are are going to raise raise eyebrows and it's going to help people to really listen. And I think people are going to listen to you because you've been in the space and you've been successful in it as successful as anybody, if not more. And I love it. So thank you so much again for your time today. Raekwon Smith, uh, you can follow him on Instagram at Raekwon Smith and on Twitter at rsmith24 underscore. Thank you so much for joining us today, Raekwon. Thank you for having me. Of course, follow us at NIL Now Show on Twitter or on Reddit at NIL. Tell a friend, let us know what you think about the show. Send in your comment. Find next week's episode out wherever you get your podcast. Hey, and if you know someone that'd love to be a guest on the show, hit us up. We'd love to hear from you. Our producer, Dean Zolkowski, always taking inquiries already. Thank you, of course, to him. And I want to say thank you to my co-host, Kevin Jones, KJ. And I also want to say thank you to our audio engineer, Colin Schmeling, and our executive producers, Richard Diamond, Selena Roberts, and Scott Broder. Until next week, we'll see ya. Thanks for listening to NIL Now, presented by Headline Studio and Reddit.